<laughs> Cheryl's got a few remarks, and then I'll come back up. Cheryl wanted me to give you just a little bit of an encouragement tonight. We've I've personally been in the pro-life movement since about 1984, and through all of those years, as you can imagine, I know some of you have been involved that long or longer, perhaps, and, um, you know, we've, through that amount of time, we've had a lot of victories. We've had some defeats, but the when we look back in time, we look at the victories, they come to our mind, they make us smile, they give us encouragement. And the defeats, when we look back later at them, we find out that they're not really defeats, they're just maybe momentary setbacks or, or special moments that God put in our path to make us stronger. And so all, overall, when you look back, it can be very, very encouraging. And some people ask us, um, we were counting up the other day, we were able to um, account for about a little over 40 abortion clinics, we think of 40, 41 around in there, that we had some part in helping to close, either through um, a prayerful presence, sidewalk counseling, picketing, or uh, just applying pressure, asking people to make phone calls on the internet or something like that. Um, and we've lost track of how many abortionists have left the abortion industry and have lost their medical licenses and have gone to jail because of our work. And I, I just wanted to um, share with you three things tonight um, that maybe you can take with you that will be an encouragement to you. When I first started in the pro-life um, movement, I was a, I worked in a crisis pregnancy center. But very soon I realized that um, there were so many women that fell through the crisis pregnancy center safety net and never approached those places they went straight to the abortion clinics. And I thought, who is going to go to the abortion clinic to help them? And back in, this time it's like 1985 or something, you know what I mean? There just weren't a lot of people doing that at that particular point in time, not in San Diego anyway. And so um, God really put that burden on my heart. And one of the abortion clinics that we began sidewalk counseling at was one of the most radical. It was an ultra-feminist. Um, lesbian run abortion clinic. The, the communists in the area had all of their meetings there at the clinic and you know it was the homosexual epicenter you know we even heard that the witches and the warlocks hung out there I mean it was just the craziest place and I remember driving up the hill to that abortion clinic every week I would get to a certain place and my hands would just break out in a sweat because we knew that we were going to be beset by um, a very aggressive group of pro aborts And um, I thought, Lord, I don't want to drive up this hill anymore, but I kept doing it, you know what I mean? And um, it's funny because years later I went back to that place and my memory of that sidewalk was that the sidewalk was only about that big because the escorts would keep bumping me off the sidewalk, so my memory was that the sidewalk was only that wide. And uh, when I went there later, I thought, oh my gosh, look at the sidewalk, it's huge. But in my memory, I, it was never big enough for me to stay on. They were always bumping me off of it, you know. But um, anyway, that abortion clinic had a lot of problems, obviously. And um, they had financial difficulties. And I believe it was in 1997, 1996, um, the Republican convention came to San Diego, and a, we had a pro-life event there. And at that event, we identified all the abortion clinics, and we decided, you know what? This abortion clinic, I don't care what they do, we're not going there. Because they were the media darling, they had all of the media attention, they had the they had these crazy fish nets that the escorts would hold up, waiting to throw over us in case we tried to rush the doors, you know? And um, it was just a crazy place. We thought, you know, we're not gonna give them the media spotlight. We'll go to every other, there were plenty of other abortion clinics in San Diego at that time. We're not going to this one. We're not giving them their moment. And so they spent $30,000 in security that they didn't have. We found out later that they were losing money at that clinic. They were underpaying the rent on the building. And they had raised this $30,000 that they spent on security that they never needed because we never went there. And. Um, all of their extra security measures, like the, the fishnets over the driveway, um, really freaked out a bunch of the other tenants in that same building. 
And so um, a few months later, we found out they lost their lease and they had to move. And after that, the business went straight down and they closed. And we joke about it. We say it's the only abortion clinic that ever closed because we didn't pick at them. You know what I mean? <laughs> show that you have to seek wisdom and guidance from God and he will help you know how to proceed you know Ecclesiastes kind of talks about that for everything there's a season and a time to every man or under heaven there's a time to be born and a time to die and we don't think that when a baby's thriving and growing in the womb that's not a time to die that's a time to live there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted and there's a time to break down and there's a time to build up I believe right now it's a time to break down the strongholds in this community that keep that abortion clinic open. It's time to really pray and, um, you know, kind of go with what God is doing here. He's doing an amazing thing here. We just, um, I just encourage you to seek wisdom and guidance on how um, to proceed, and God will direct your path. It'll um, end up being better than you could have ever thought. Also, a second idea I wanted to share with you is that silence works um, to benefit the abortionists. We had a situation where um, I get all the email from Operation Rescue, and I have to sort through it, and we get hundreds and hundreds of emails. A lot of it is just like spam or whatever. But in all of those emails, sometimes important messages get deleted, and it's unfortunate. If you've ever emailed us and we didn't respond to you, I'm sorry. But sometimes it's just overwhelming and important messages unfortunately do get accidentally deleted. Well, at this particular point in time, I found this message. I was just about to delete it because I thought it was spam. I thought, no, I'll open it. You know what I mean, just see. Because sometimes you're taking a real chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I opened the message and it was from a sidewalk counselor in Massachusetts and she told me, you guys need to know that this abortionist in Hyannis, Massachusetts killed a girl during an abortion, and I can tell you everything about it. So I got in touch with her, and she gave me the information, and um, she goes, nobody is really talking about this. We really need to get this out. And I said, you know, I agree, because silence only benefits the abortionist. So we put the story on our website. We had two phone calls almost immediately. The first was from a well-meaning right to life group saying, please take that story down, um, let the lawyers handle it, you're endangering any civil case that 